previously on fun, food, and Asian travel. Filipinos came from the Malaysian Peninsula and they settled down in what is the Philippine Islands today. And then in the 15 or 1600s, Magellan and the Spanish discovered it. The Philippines was colonized for basically 400 years by the Spanish. In the Spanish-American War in the 1800s, essentially what happened was the Spanish relinquished control of the Philippines, but transferred ownership to the United States. So there really was not this like period of independence that the Philippines had uh, until after World War II. You have Emilio Aguinaldo, who's right there holding the Philippine flag. He was the first president of the Philippines and was also like a leader in the Revolutionary War. People who came from the Philippines were often, you know, workers, right? They worked in the fisheries, the factory, the farm, the farmlands. One of the biggest things that kind of impacted Filipino migration to the United States was the Immigration uh, and Nationality Act in the 60s, which removed like quotas. So like before, like you can only get a number of people from certain countries. But with, with that act, it was passed in the 60s, there were no more limits. So like people could come in uh, uh, to live in the United States. So that's how a lot of Filipinos today, like our community, were able to come, right? In the 80s, we understand the Philippines was under martial law. During the 60s through the 80s under President Ferdinand Marcos, right? It caused a lot of, uh, you know, political uh, division and strife in the country. But we like to highlight here, right? You can see this uh, body right here, clad in white, who's on the ground bleeding. That's Nino Aquino. He was one of the main opposition senators who was against martial law and against Ferdinand Marcos. He was assassinated when returning from the United States. Marcos has obviously denied the assassination. He was associated with it, but you know, you put two and two together, it kind of makes logical sense that there was some connection. But regardless, right, his wife, Corazon Aquino, Cory Aquino was one of the main figureheads in the People Power Revolution, which reestablished like democratic rule in the Philippines. You can see, right here, a lot of Filipino activists, right, were doing mass mobilization at the time. Some of our elders at PWC were actually activists during that time. They have incredible stories that they are always willing to share. And so that was kind of where the Philippines is at today in terms of, like, of a uh, of, uh, government, right? And then moving along, moving right along, we have uh, Leah Salonga, right? Everyone knows Leah Salonga. For those of you that don't, she was a Broadway actress in Hollywood, too. We also have Roman Gabriel right here. He was a football player. I forget which team. The Eagles. The Eagles? Really? Wow. Yeah. We're from Philly. I think we just found that out. So cool. He's played for the Los Angeles Rams and the Philadelphia Eagles. Even though he never won a championship, he was a Pro Bowl quarterback for a good couple of years. And then did some Hollywood pictures with John Wayne and Rock Hudson. She has a friend. This was years ago, where her friend lived in Philly. He used to live nearby or next door to a guy who worked at NFL Films. Her friend's dad was buddies with the guy and one day invited the kids over to the stadium. Jen's friend brought his sisters who actually had a crush on Roman Gabriel. And then um, Roman Gabriel was on the goalpost working out or something. And then his, his sister tried to go down to see him. But then a golf cart came and pulled him away. The brother said, oh, you guys scared him. Wow. Or something like that. Wow. Yeah, and, and that's what makes the history real. The stories that, like, we often think of, we often think of history, oh, these are just people that, people that like reading books or whatever. But, like, these are real people that we know, and we have connections and stories to, right? As we approach, like, contemporary history, you can see, like, there are different stars in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which show different Filipino and Filipino-American celebrities. Right there, you can see like Jessica Sanchez, the American Idol finalist. She was added recently, right? Because she was the runner-up on the 11th season of Idol. I remember every single night it aired, Tito and Tita was like, go text your vote so that Jessica can win or something like that. Okay. I also like to point out two more things here. You can see up there, there's an aircraft carrier. Essentially what that is, one of our staff members at PWC. Her name is Tita Mirla. Um, she uh, was part of activism to kind of end U.S. occupancy in military bases in the Philippines. You know those old military bases that were not being used anymore? Ships were still coming in. 
but she was one of the key campaigners to kind of say to the United States, we don't need your ships here in the Philippines anymore. Just, just because, of course, the Philippines was an independent country. And having military bases there was like, kind of like this point, that, that, that uh, sticking point for them. And of course, Manny Pacquiao. Everyone knows Manny Pacquiao and Apple D App. Everyone knows him too, right? The takeaway here that I always share with people is like, you know we're not just nurses. We're not just accountants, right? We're in everything. Filipinos are in entertainment, in politics, activism, music, um, the military, whatever, right? And so having this really rich history in this mural is something that we all should at least learn from and be proud of as well.